Lord, open our hearts to your word. Give us your insights into it. Transform us by your power, mercy, and grace, and we give you thanks. We thank you. It is the Lord's day, and we can gather together. We ask that souls will be saved, and bodies be healed, and souls be refreshed, and families be reunited. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, all. Amen. Bye. So this is a difficult passage for us because it's not what we think that Jesus says. Uh, but let's look at it because it is what Jesus says. Yeah. Yeah, so we're in Luke 12, verse 40, uh, 49. Please. Uh, Luke 12, 49, and this is the NLT, New Living Translation. Yes. Jesus causes division. I have come to set the world on fire. I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Did you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No. I've come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart. Three in favor of me and two against, or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Wow, huh? So we think about Jesus bringing peace to the earth, and to those who call upon his name, his peace is available. But when somebody makes a decision for Christ, it often makes, it makes them different than the rest of their family, friends, and circles. And so sometimes somebody comes to Christ and all of a sudden their best friend is no longer their best friend because they don't go out busting up bars and whatever. And the joy of the Lord is kind of convicting to those around them. And so they, um, they separate from us. And, and in one sense, we separate from them, but that's because we're walking with Jesus. And so we need to be continuing having good relationships with our circles of friends and family, but not in a way that compromises the truth or... Uh, alienates us from Christ, but rather walk close to Christ and then let him do this. So I came to set the world on fire, which is a really unusual sentence for the Lord Jesus, but it is true because the fire consumes the dross and the uh, and for his disciples to be on fire for faith, it, it's radical. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I'm under a heavy burden until it's accomplished. So, uh, we use the word baptism a lot of different ways, but the, but the sense of baptism is, is immersion. I'm, I'm, um, I'm all in. I'm, uh, I'm like, we baptize in water by immersion, meaning that the people get totally wet. When we get baptized in the Spirit, it floods us. But this is a baptism of suffering. Um, the cross is a brutal way to die. And Jesus knows that, that he has this immersion in suffering coming before him. And it's a heavy burden to him. We think, whoa, how, how amazing this is weeks or months, probably weeks before the triumphant entry that he's already understanding the burden of suffering that's going to happen for him on the cross. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, I, I sense that's, that's uh, uh, seeping through uh, the, uh, this whole confrontation with the cross that he ha it has um, essentially, uh, he, you know, he's got to be con contemplating, even though it's been contemplated since before the creation of the world. That's right. Uh, now we're down to maybe uh, uh, counting by days, the number of, uh, you know, maybe weeks, but uh, not a lot of time here. And the reality of, of it is seeping in 
And as such, it's bringing forth a sense of, what am I doing this for? What, you know, even he would question that. Not that he's doubting there's a reason for it. He's set in his mind that it has to be done. That was settled. That was settled before the foundation of the world. This has to be done. Otherwise, words lose meaning. Right and wrong don't mean anything unless they understand there's a difference and that there's a debt for wrong and a blessing for right. And the whole equation of life has to be recalibrated here, reset. So there's so much involved. And it's causing him to bring out these statements that seem out of the ordinary for him. And in a sense, they truly are. But you can see where they're coming from, from that perspective of, I've got this enormous, terrible, as he puts it, terrible baptism of suffering to deal with. And all of these elements that I am dying for, are they, have all of the issues been brought forth and at least examined? And some of these issues are really uncomfortable. This whole vision, this whole bringing forth of, to think, first of all, do you think I came to bring peace? I'm known as the Prince of Peace. But no, I've come to divide people. That word divide kind of catches me. To me, see, it seems to me that if it was at a more temperate emotional setting, he might have said, I've come, the divisions I'm creating are really to group people. We'll have groups of believers and we'll have groups of non-believers and so forth. But he's talking about division. He's talking about animosity between people because of him. But it's got to be. It's got to be. He's got to take it to that level. Even at the familial level, even at the family level, we're talking, you know, son against daughter. And well, we got the whole list there in verse 53. Father against son, mother against daughter, et cetera. So, I mean, it's really, there's a terseness about this. But again, faced with that terrible baptism of suffering, you can see why he wants to make sure these issues are brought forth. That's right. Even if they're uncomfortable. If they're uncomfortable for you, big deal. Consider what I'm going to go through. You just don't realize, you have no idea, nobody does, what he really went through. Amen. Carry the burden of sin, the sin burden of all mankind. I mean, this is, how can you even begin to imagine what that means? Amen. Good morning. Welcome with us. We're glad you're here. So Jesus turns to the crowd and he says, when you see the clouds beginning to form in the West, you say, here comes a shower. And you're right. And when the South wind blows, you say, today will be a scorcher. And it is. You fools, you know how to interpret the weather signs of earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Wow. Yep. Yeah, again, the whole issue of hypocrisy. Yeah. The ability to major in the minors and minor in the majors. That's right. I think what's going on here, we're talking about, you know, what priorities cause you to spend so much time in analyzing the weather when in fact the kingdom of God is among you and what he, do you pay it by comparison? It's a stunning contrast. 57. Yes, Luke 12, 57 NLT. Why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? When you're on the way to court with your accuser, try to settle the matter before you get there. Try to settle out of court. Right. Otherwise, your accuser may drag you before the judge who will hand you over to an officer who will throw you into prison. And if that happens, you won't be free again until you have paid the very last penny. Settling out of court. Yeah, it's always the case. Maybe the lawyers make less money, but even they would like to see an easy settlement. But yeah, it's always going the court process out. It doesn't matter what it is. 
it is just more expense, more pain, more time, and all in the wrong way. So settle out of court if you possibly can. I've had a long-term friend, and he's not with us anymore, but every time he went to court, he lost. And so he lost, and then he had to pay the lawyers big money, and sometimes he had money and sometimes he didn't. And then the lawyer would say, well, let's see if we can't. No, I have the right to have this. I'm right, and they're wrong, and I'm right, and I'm right. And every time he did it, it cost him money, and other times he did it, it cost him relationships and things. So just breathe, figure out what the Lord wants you to do, and have discussion to settle it out of court. And, you know, particularly if it's a brother or a sister, you know, pray it through. Find somebody to mediate it who's good and godly and figure it out. And so once we determine that we have rights and that we're going to take you to court, okay, well, you could lose. And if you lose, you're much better off to have not gone at all. And in Christian love, you know, is this thing more important than agape? Is this matter more important than agape? Now, there's sometimes, there's sometimes that in a car crash or something, we need to go to the courts because the insurance company are really out to harm us, to settle for their own good and to make sure that it takes years of suffering before you get a settlement. I'm not saying don't do that, but I am saying if it's one-on-one with a situation with a neighbor or a friend or a family member, figure it out. And the Lord God will give you the grace to figure it out. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll always get the greatest financial benefit from the mediation, but you will. It's so much better than going to court. And it's incredibly more better, much more better than going to court and losing. So figure it out. Go before God and say, is this, how do I agape here? How do I love here? And and you may not be happy with what he tells you, but then take a breath, get his mind on it, and then you can then you can move forward. Yeah. So we Yeah. Wait, go, sorry. No, I was I was summarizing here. We've had this wonderful chapter twelve, but we've had these incredibly serious teachings about honoring God, about uh, understanding the times about forgiveness, about the hope, about the promise, about about hypocrisy. Uh, like, boom, 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 boom. There's a whole, whole lifetime of lessons in this one chapter. And, yeah. um, and you may say we just skimmed over them, and I can't argue with that. We, <laughs> we have, uh, you know, we have, we have prayed, and we have tried to lay out some groundwork for these. But if you think... If you think that anybody knows everything about the 12th chapter of Luke, they're, you're, they're wrong. Even if you spent your whole lifetime and wrote 47 books on it, you cannot know all of the, you can't live out all of the things here. The, the word of God is living and active like a two-edged sword. Right. Yeah, so, there is so much here. It's, uh, it's, um, it's a real journey in itself, this, yes. uh, for this uh, chapter 12. Um, quite, a, uh, quite a path it takes. Amen. Um, and um, I think you hit it all to say, um, you could live through this. I mean, over and over, you could revisit this time and time again. You'll find new stuff every time. Amen. You say, how did I miss that the first time around? Yeah, yeah. Well, circumstances were different. You come at it from a different context, and yes, it'll look different. It'll read differently. Um, it's just the way it is. That's yeah. what a living document does, that it, it uh, adapts to, it, it, it comes forth with uh, uh, different perspectives according to the situation you're in. Amen. 
Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that we can gather together in your name today. We'd ask that our, our souls and our spirit would be ready to hear what you have to say. That we would cast our cares upon you because you care for us. That souls would be saved, that bodies would be healed, that families be restored. That your joy overwhelms us. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you again. Thank you again for your instruction here. Uh, realizing the relevance of it and the uh, the application to be so um, broad-based that uh, it ever expands before us as we drill down on it. It's, it's, it's quite an amazing thing and uh, a wonderful thing. And we thank you for it, Lord. We pray for your continued guidance that we may live lives that glorify you. In Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Blessed day, all. Glad you could join us.